I know, you know, even before I moved this interview on, I know everybody branched off. They did their own thing. You out there, you getting your money with your mixtapes. Jimmy starts Bird Gang. Um, I was part of that too. I was in rep part of Bird Gang, but I was on the road. The bowling wave, bowling. Yep. Me, rest in peace, stack bundles, Mel Matrix, free Mel Matrix. Um, a bunch of us on the tour bus, like, you know, I was on that mixtape on, on a few Bird Gang mixtapes. And if you listen to one of uh, Stack Bundle's early freestyles, you hear him shout me out and shit. Cause we in the studio, like just working. Jim is one of them guys that always called me or he'll bump into me, even though we all doing our own thing, bump into me in the Heights or wherever we at. Yo, come to the studio, come pull up. Let's get some work done. You know what I mean? It was never like, oh, you came all this, stay over here. You know what I'm saying? Dope, so, dope. Yeah, Jewel. That's real. Anybody, you know what I mean? Uh, and again, you bring up Stack Bundles, um, RIP Stack. You know, it's unfortunate. So many of our artists um, are losing their lives in the streets. You know, back then, it was not happening as frequently as it's happening right now. Um, you know, di didn't you get shot yourself around that same time? I don't know if it was around the same time, but it was not that long after. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely got shot. You know, I was, I, I like to say I was sleepwalking. You know what, what I mean? What you mean I, by that? I wasn't aware as I'm aware now of dumb shit I was doing back then. Hanging out with wild jewelry, just standing outside in the Bronx. None but warehouses around. But I'm thinking I'm good because I'm 40 deep. Them 40 people ran on me. You get what I'm saying? So it's just certain things that I feel like that's a part of my my life. I'm, I'm here to still talk about it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, but that's that's the mentality I had back then. I feel like jail, my last bid as an adult, woke me up. Got you. Where'd you get shot at? In my leg. Anybody else? Because you said you was with like 40 people that day. Anybody else get shot? So, yeah, I'm like, I'm a, I'm outside or whatever. And um, we see two dudes pull up and we don't think nothing of it. I don't think nothing of it. I'm with 40 niggas. And these 40 niggas, I've been around for like a few months. You know what I'm saying? And and it was just, you know, it was on some, I felt like I felt comfortable. I felt safe. You know what I'm saying? But especially since I'm I'm around a lot of people, even if they not strapped, Somebody going to think twice about yep. running up on 40 people. How you rob 40 people? You know what I'm saying? But um, I ended up just, I'm just standing there like, he like, yeah. He pull up and um, 40 people ran on me. And then I hear my man, my man, the only one that doubled back. Like, yo, come on, Jack. So after getting shot, because he shot at me twice. First one missed and then he hit me in the leg. Once I seen him, because he chased after everybody, he shot at, at everybody. I was the only one that got hit because I was the only one that stood there. I didn't think we the running thing was a thing. I, I'm thinking like we we going we we get to it. Like whoever's here, where's the goons? I'm the rapper. Let's cowboy time. I'm gonna sit back. You guys shoot it out. <laughs> nah. But um, <laughs> but um, nah. Um, it didn't work out like that, you know. But I I I was still good, you know what I mean? I, I still made it out. You know, the the gunshot went straight through, and you know I tightened my circle up after that. But um, yeah, it taught me a lesson. That was a lesson learned. You know what I'm saying? So so when because two dudes pull up, and I'm with you. Like like, you got to have a whole different mentality. Whether you got yours on you or not, it's forty dudes. That's why I, so, so you don't know if it was a lineup. What it was? Yeah, are they looking back? Was they coming for you? Was it was it was it a robbery? I didn't think so because it was a t attempt, but. I didn't think so because I wasn't the only one jeweled up. It was niggas with crazier jewels than me. With me. Uh, Word. But, you know, I was just the last one to get out of there. That's all. You know what I mean? Damn. Okay, so the bullet went straight through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in DR. As soon as I got out the hospital, flew to DR. I'm already jet skiing on, on the water and shit. I was ready Gucci. I just learned how to just... Tighten, because my circle was already tight. I had the studio in my crib, you know what I mean? All I want to do is do music. 
or do something that's music related that's beneficial to me. But I let my guards down, you know, got comfortable. I'm in the hood. Dumb shit. Did you ever find out who did it? Nah. Mm -mm. Never? Mm -mm. Yes, it was Tom Thompson Parkson. <laughs> nah, nah, like, <laughs> like, it was Tommy from 130th. Like, bro. Yeah, all you gotta say, all you gotta say is yeah. Nah, I don't know. Like, nah, I don't know. Like we handle it. That, like <laughs> Nah, I just told my man to this day, I don't know who did it. And you know it is what it is. It's the casualties of the game. It's like I caught a lot of people slipping as a youngin'. I told you about and, my and, charges. And this time it was your turn. Yeah, you know, I don't believe in karma. You know what I'm saying? I believe in manifestation, like you bringing certain things into your world, but um you know, I, I that's why I, I, it's like I chuck it up. It is what it is. I I did more than that. But if that's what it yep. is, then now I could tighten up and learn from it and move on. You know what I mean? Got you. OK, you said you said the bullet went straight through. You're good. You're back in DR. You're jet skiing. But you also made mention a couple of times in this interview. Your last bid. When did you go back in and why? Um. I got I got I got charged with an assault char assault assault charge or whatever. Um I was the only one that got caught. It's just somebody, you know what I mean, press charges or whatever, and then I ended up just taking the charge. That's it. I I, I got a good lawyer, got two years, but that, that bit is kind of what got me here as far as like mentally, as far as waking me up and being aware, but yeah, I did a bid in 2014. I had to, I did some interviews right before. Mm -hmm. You know something for somebody who's watching this, um, who's in the street life. You know, th th this is all they know. They in and out of the system, and it's only a matter of time before they do something that they're gonna get lost in the system. They never coming home. What was it about that time? What was it about that last bit that changed your Because I don't mindset? feel like I should have been. I mean, I was sleepwalking, like I said before. I wasn't aware. I wasn't woke, like people say. But it's just, uh, I, I don't think I should have been there. I don't think, because it's different if it's like, you know what I mean? If if I'm caught red-handed in this, you know what I mean, I beat somebody up, it's different. But the I'm the, the most uh, notable person there. I'm a name that you could remember. You could easily say, yo, he was there. He probably set it up. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, what was the question? My bad. Okay. I was, I, I just wanted to know, you, you changed your mindset. You oh yeah, yeah. I changed my mindset because I, it, it kind of stripped me from my ego. Like me being before the bid, before the last bid as an adult, because a, a bid as a juvenile, really don't change you. It does, but it might not, it's not gonna have the same effect as real jail jail. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's more like boot camp or whatever. But um, me going to Rikers Island and being stripped of being a dude that always has certain official niggas with me, I'm in there with no entourage. After the rap, it's, it's different when you you do it before the bit, but after having a rap career and people in my own state, people know who the fuck I am. It it just kind of like it stripped me of everything. No jewelry, no clothes, no nothing. I can't do nothing. I ain't got no phone. I'm so used to having a phone. I'm so used to smoking weed every day, and having an entourage. I don't fuck with too many niggas. I'm forced. I'm thinking, yo, bro, when I got to to the Rikers Island, I'm thinking I'm gonna have my own cell. And I'm chilling. I walk into it. It shit looked like a shelter. Like 50, 50, 60 beds. One, somebody doing 60 to life. Somebody else is doing 15. I'm on, I only got two joints. You know what I mean? So it kind of woke me up. It stripped me of my ego. Boom. And then I got into, into reading books. At first I was reading like hood novels. The, the, the average shit that you learn on the island. Like shouts to my yeah. guy. That, I forgot his name. My Iceberg bad. Slim, I'm sure you was reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those is those still back. joints. But uh, Animal, it was a it was a book called Animal One, Two, and Three. If you did time around that time, you know what I'm talking about. But um, I remember OG telling me like, "Yo, you reading the you reading that all that mud for the brain," and I never heard of the term. So 
that shit kind of like, you know what I mean? It hit, it hit home where it's like, damn, you're right. I should be reading something else that's that's going to help me elevate mentally. And that's what I did. You know what I mean? I wrote, a, I read a lot of books that kind of woke me up. Not kind of, just woke me up, period. Like, for real. So and it helped me step my home, vocab up. Huh? Say that one more time. I'm sorry. Said, and it helped me step my vocab up because that's all I did. You know what I mean? A lot of books, books was like movies in your head in jail. You know what I'm saying? So if you wasn't working out or going to the yard and play ball, you reading a book. You know what I mean? And then you got the library. So boom, you could just, you choose whatever you want to choose. And I just chose to read a lot of self-help books. You know what I mean? Yeah, because, you know, every time somebody come home, yo, I'm never going back. That That's, that's they, they walk out the door. I'm never coming back. Six months later, a year later, they write back. And I just think it's important for people to hear that side of the story. Like, how did you change your entire mindset, your way of thinking? Because that's where it starts. If, if you don't change the way you think and the way you see life, you're going to end right back up where you started because you didn't fix the problem. Yeah. And, it, you know, it strips you from drinking and and then it's like forces you to work out. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Working out was like, a was like I don't know, it was like using the phone. Like, we would just be chilling and, yo, let me, yo let's do 100 push-ups real quick. It's like, it was just, you know what I mean? It just changed me. I went in there 240. I came home 180. Uh. Lit, you know what I'm saying? It just it just changed a lot, you know what I'm saying, and for the better, you know what I mean. Even though I didn't want to do a day, but I understood it. It, it kind of def- it not kind of it definitely woke me up, you know what I mean. And that's, that's why dope. I stayed to myself, you know. I I come outside when it's when when I need to. Nah, that's dope, kid. Congratulations on that. Um, 